Hey everyone, today I wanted to talk about the killers of Dead by Daylight and what they did before the realm, as in their jobs or professions, or what they were aspiring to be. I also want to discuss what they may have become had they not entered the realm. Let's get into it. Let's get the easy characters out of the way first. Shape, Huntress, Bubba, Demogorgon, and Executioner essentially just boiled down to being killers before the realm. None of them necessarily had a profession of any kind, and their main thing was was just killing stuff. Trapper or Evan Macmillan was the son of Archie Macmillan, the owner of the Macmillan estate. This estate was very profitable, having a coal mine and ironworks. It was situated in the town of Weeks, in Washington, and Evan was likely very wealthy. Evan spends most of his lore growing up around the Macmillan workers, even bonding with some of them, and assisting them by helping them to unionize. It's only when Evan discovers how his father murdered his mother and uncle, and the workers sell him out, does he become his father's harsh enforcer. He then later betrays him, murdering his father and trapping his workers in the mines before disappearing. The greatest tragedy of Evan's life is that he lost his creativity and his softer side. He used to love art, and he would draw to help express inner thoughts he had. With his father and the entity's influence though, he soon became cold. Wraith, prior to the realm, grew up in Nigeria, and lost all his family during the Civil War. It seems like his father was potentially something like a blacksmith, with the bell Philip receives as a child being made of cast iron. It's quite possible he would have followed in his father's footsteps and became one himself. This may seem like a stretch, but it's possible that this is the reason why he went to work at Auto Haven Wreckers after moving to America, as the daily handling of metal may have reminded him of him. This interest in crafting metal, or reusing the parts to create something new, can also be seen in some cosmetics. Hillbilly was a prisoner to his parents, and so I wouldn't consider his work as a job, but he was a farmhand basically, for his parents' farm, Coldwind Farm. It was a very profitable and large farm it seems, located in Texas I think, making money from the corn and livestock presumably. Billy's main job was slaughtering the animals in the cowshed, which resulted in much aggression built up over the years. Had his parents just been better or normal people, he probably would have grown up to inherit the farm, and would have also helped out on it, just in a less aggressive way. Nurse seemed to originally not be employed in any way when she was married to her husband, Andrew Smithson, who was a lumberjack. Whilst married, Andrew built them both a house to live in until his head was crushed in a logging accident. This event was in the newspaper and caused Sally a lot of pain. It forced her to get a job herself, with the only employment available being at the local Crotus Pren Asylum, where she worked for two decades. It's also very possible she worked as a nurse during the First World War, as some cosmetics suggest. Despite having little qualification it seems, when she first started, over the years she built up her skills as a nurse. Hag or Lisa Sherwood is a fairly unique case, growing up in a reclusive village. At the time she is taken, she appears to still be in education of some kind, likely later in her college years, or an equivalent of university. It may be different for her as she's in this reclusive village. She is also said to study algebra, so she was possibly planning to go into some kind of profession surrounding numbers. Of course, her trip and fall after messing with the hexes resulted in her ending up captured. Doctor or Herman Carter was a very skilled, unique, and very messed up doctor. He was recruited by the CIA specifically for his brutal and unique methods. His primary site is Larry's Memorial Institute, where he conducted many messed up experiments into electroshock therapy. His goal was initially to form interrogation techniques, but it quickly fell into him simply experimenting with the human mind. Doctor I don't think would have become a normal doctor or anything without the entity. He is how he is, I think. Freddy prior to the realm was a groundskeeper of Badham Preschool in Springwood. That's pretty much his whole job history, I think, that we know of at least. Pig or Amanda Young, I don't know if she had any job specifically prior to her time as a disciple of Jigsaw, where she helped him to set up the games, and later did some of her own. Potentially if she had overcome her addiction, in a less Jigsaw-y way, she could have become someone who helps others overcome their own addictions. Just, again, not in the way she learned from Jigsaw. Basically the same, just a much more positive flip on it. Clown was mostly just a killer. It's kind of vague if he was actually a circus clown or not, 
or if he simply travelled around with the circus, or if he simply travelled around with the different circuses to blend in and allow him to get close to his victims. His outfit is stolen after all. The suggestions for him actually working as a clown would be things like his weapon cooldown animation, which suggests that he learnt some tricks and stuff. So maybe. <laughs> Spirit or Rin Yamaoka was studying at university before she was taken. She was also working part-time in a restaurant to support her father and the collapsing family estate. At university, she is said to study education, so I assume she was training to become a teacher of some kind. Legion is obviously a bit of a loaded one, as there's four of them. Frank is someone who doesn't appear to have a job of any kind after being kicked out of school. He is known to be very charismatic though, and able to light up a room. With a better upbringing maybe, he could have been a manager or a politician of some kind, I don't know, something like that. Julie is quite similar, and to the best of my knowledge, there's nothing really to indicate a profession she was aiming for, I don't think. If they both had better intentions, they likely could have been good leaders, but together, they are destructive. For Susie, it's possible she would have become an artist of some kind, with the doodles and sketches we see within different things like her notebook charm. Also, her mask is far more arts and crafty than the other members. We also knew that Susie was applying for colleges based on her cosmetics, so maybe an art degree of some kind, something like that. We know that Joey worked a number of jobs, his most recent being at a store of some kind, before he was fired. Joey is stated to be impulsive, but this doesn't necessarily give us much. He is a lot more stylish, I guess, than the other Legion members, and is known to cosplay, so maybe he would have found a career in fashion of some kind. Plague or Adiris was mentored from a young age by Haban, and dedicates her life to her faith. She begins by working for priests, assisting in rituals. She then becomes greatly favoured by her people, especially during the outbreak of a plague, and soon becomes the High Priestess of Babylon, which seemed to be the highest position in Babylon at the time, at least in relation to her faith. Ghostface is quite mysterious when it comes to what he did prior to the realm. We know of course he was a journalist in Roseville, Florida, for I believe around a year at least. It's very likely he was also a killer within other towns leading a double life as probably a journalist too. But it's also very possible that he had other professions too. With his big ego though, the whole thing of writing about his murders in the paper seems to be the reason why he is a journalist in the first place. So I think he probably always was one, changing his name from town to town. Oni is the heir to his family's great estate. He is one of the last remaining true samurai and dedicates his life to ridding Japan of false samurai. Despite his father's pleas to pursue something more noble, what this would have been is unclear, but something that doesn't include Kanabos, I imagine. With his family's power, he probably could have done almost anything, and likely could have raised his son a lot better too. Deathslinger or Caleb Quinn was a very skilled inventor and engineer. He would have likely had a very successful career as an inventor and engineer had he not snapped and attacked his boss, Henry Bayshaw which led him down a path of hatred and a need for revenge. His skills likely could have been used for good. Blight or Talbot Grimes was a talented chemist, who studied at the London School of Medicine. Like Slinger, he had a promising career, until he ended up with recruitment as the head chemist within the British East India Company during the Opium War, leading him to unethical experiments where he attempted to make a super soldier serum, essentially. From there, he goes crazy. Basically, he could have just been a great chemist, and potentially could have even investigated the Entity's realm in a saner state, had he not sought recruitment during the war. Twins are some of the simpler killers, with them having a more unique situation, being on the run since a young age. We know in her tome lore, Charlotte had dreams of sailing west, a dream of her mother's and now her own. Her general dream seems to be settling down and running a small farm of sorts, so had they not been taken, or had they escaped, this is probably what she would have done. Trickster, prior to coming to the realm, was an international K-pop star, finding success within a boy band first named Nospin, after being recruited by Yun Jin. Prior to his recruitment, his father trained him for a life of fame and singing. Ji Woon worked at his father's restaurant, 
restaurant, with the earnings going towards his vocal lessons. Jiwoon's first single is named On Target, produced by himself. No Spin become quite popular. Their first single is named Cut Through You, which tops the Korean charts. But after Jiwoon leaves the band to die in a studio fire, his fame only grows more. He releases studio albums, which include the screams of his victims. His debut album is named Edge of Revival. It has a mixed reaction from fans, but receives critical acclaim. Nemesis's original life is unclear. However, it is suggested that he was a human before he became a bioweapon. I know there's a story behind Nemesis in the films, but the canon we have in-game is the Resident Evil games, and specifically the remakes too, which I don't think specify who Nemesis was. Cenobite before becoming a Cenobite was a man named Elliot Spencer. He served in the First World War in the British Army as a captain. It's during this time at war that he loses faith in humanity, and finds himself in British India, where he locates the Lament configuration. Artist or Kamina Mora was of course an artist prior to the realm, and a famous one within Chile. She launches a large-scale surrealist movement, and grows close to other painters, and gains a following. Her art specifically challenged the corrupt politics that were occurring at the time. Had she not been taken, she would have probably just continued on with this. Sadako is kind of a unique situation, being gifted with special powers as the daughter of a seer. She kills someone out of uncontrollable anger at one of her mother's public demonstrations of her powers. Soon after, her mother dies and she is tossed down the well. If she hadn't been, it's unclear really if her powers would have been controllable, but maybe she could have become like her mother and performed to the public in some way. Dredge is really tough to define, but as we know it consumed the entirety of the fold, I guess we can just say those were its professions before. It's unclear what these jobs would have been, but they were probably standard things needed like farmers, required for the community to function. Wesker, prior to coming to the realm, was part of Project W, and recruited to the Umbrella Corporation. He helps to create the T-Virus, whilst working as a member of the special Raccoon City Police Unit, named STARS, or Special Tactics and Rescue Service becoming the captain of the Alpha Team. From there, he goes off on his own, for his whole Ouroboros world domination thing. As he was part of the Project W program, it's likely he never had a chance to really be anything else than what he ended up as. Knight, or Tahos, is captured and becomes part of the Guardia Compania, where he learns to fight and wield weapons, essentially. The company appears to be a sellsword company of sorts. This is where he meets his three ghost gang members, and eventually wins his his freedom from the company, and soon gains knighthood. He then goes back and destroys the Guardia Compania. He was a not-so-noble knight, basically, and I highly doubt he would have been that different without the entity. Alright, well that's gonna do it. I do hope you enjoyed, and let me know if there's anything I missed. Thanks, and... Okay, bye!